You want it, you get it. In this video, we will analyze the last three gameplay videos on this channel. The main point is to find patterns of things that I'm not doing well. We can learn from the mistakes, and you get an example of a replay analysis, which is key to improving yourself. If you want to give replay analysis a try before watching this, you can rewatch these gameplay videos first, take notes, and revisit this video to compare our findings. The links are in the description below. But you can also treat this like fast food and continue watching to just get the meat. Let's start with neutral. I'm releasing too many 1.0s. I sometimes think enemies are unaware or won't expect it, while I'm actually totally in their viewport and it's the most obvious thing I could do. I should chill a bit and hold longer. If they haven't noticed me initially and panic parry on the audio cue, I can still release at the end of the parry. In some instances, I fish for parries in a stupid and disrespectful way. For example, this greatsword guy. I can just ignore him because I'm the only person around and I can just scare rush up the mountain. If I have to parry him because I cannot get out or I have to protect teammates behind me, I could dodge parry. Or I could stone farm him with a light attack, dodge and then parry. This is safer than just running into him and YOLO predict parrying. This could be tied to awareness as well. I know about this stuff, but I don't apply it every time when I should. If the second part of his follow-up attack hit me, I'd be dead for not ulting earlier. In situations where my teammate and me both charge a focus attack on the same guy, I should be holding a lot. If my teammate releases and gets parried, I can sidestep the execution and we won't both get hit. If the enemy parries, my teammate and me can both release right after and deal double the damage. I am whiffing some of my attacks and abilities. Slashing the air here is pure brain fart. Here it is fine to charge a spin and scare the enemy into parrying to create an opening for my teammates, but I should be closer to the enemy. Matari ult will most often go on the closest enemy because of how the crosshair tends to do its own thing. So sometimes going closer to my target first and ulting later is better. With some zipping Fs, I just get unlucky that teammates are iframing them, but others I just outright miss. The trigger for Fing here is seeing my teammate with no armor, but I'm not turning the camera onto him in time. I have to say though, in this game most of the Fs and ults are pretty well timed and I couldn't find a single instance where I could have saved a teammate but didn't. In the other game I'm playing Zipping V1, which heals slowly over a long time and requires ulting way earlier into the fight than V2. Something I wouldn't have noticed if 9-1 hadn't pointed it out. In trios it's not a good idea to use Zipping F on myself when I'm not pressured, unless I cannot find any resources. The F heals teammates way more than myself and they might need it more than me. I have the horrible habit of always trying to shoot the people my monk claps, even when I'm close to him. I'm not hitting every shot and dealing less damage than with melee. I should be standing where they are going to land and release a focus attack instead. Creditor actually pointed this out to me in another game, but I'm also noticing this here. I feel insecure that I might miss the melee attack, but it's never going to get better if I don't start practicing now. I tend to shoot too much in situations where I should do other things. I want to improve my aim more and just taking the shots is the best way to do so. But it becomes a problem if I risk losing fights or the habit spills over into tournaments. We've talked about the monk clap, but this is another instance where I should be grappling and staggering the guy for our monk instead of shooting. I'm wasting time and ammo by trying to shoot enemies that are covered by obstacles. This is a habit from another game where the physics caused most projectiles to fly in a very high arc over buildings or people in between. I know it doesn't work like that in Araka, but I'm still playing like that. It's an escalation of commitment bias. Targets behind cover will only get hit by cannon and pistol in some cases, or AoE soul jades. Here I'm shooting into melee with burst arrow scatter shot. This could deal a lot of damage if only I slightly miss the targets on purpose. When I shoot directly at them while they are attacking, this destroys my projectile and cancels the damage. If I hit the ground under them, I get guaranteed area damage. 
My camera work needs improvement. I'm feeling super comfortable around the enemy monk because he is far away looking at another team and halfway behind the roof. But there's no guarantee he doesn't try to grab me, so I should turn my camera a bit to have him in it. I'm missing this guy too, who's attacking me while powdering. In this game, in Sunwings, we are constantly split. You can see it on the minimap, and even shooting different targets at times. It's way worse in the full length game. For the YouTube version, I cut out some sections where nothing happens in which we are split too. Xerix is trying very hard to always be in the best position possible and relocating all the time. Kingsman and me are not always following up or even on the same page about where we want to be. I don't see the point of relocating that often and risk getting split. Relocating is fine, but this is too much. Spoiler alert, our team could never really fix this and find some middle ground. Despite talking about this issue for months, and trying out different shot calling systems, we were split in tournaments too, which is one of the main reasons why our team disbanded. You cannot hear it here, but it's in the gameplay video. Right here, I'm making a false call out that I'm group healing. I had group heal in the previous game. In this game, my teammate only gave me advanced heal and I misremembered it for a moment. A false call out like that is dangerous because it can make teammates stop resetting or feel overconfident. Here I'm falling down a hill while powdering. This only happened once in these three games, but this is something I know to watch out for because I notice it in other replays too. I need less movement or better camera work in situations like this. In some of the fights, we should be more tactical with target calls and going in at the right time. 9-1, Wushan and me were playing for fun, so we didn't bother, and comms with Tianhai and Sai tend to be forgiving, because you can open with either ult. Xerix, Kingsman and me on the other hand, were practicing for a tournament, so we should avoid going into two teams like that, or counter calling each other frequently. Bonus tip, one of the reasons why we won this young fight was that Plum's team opened with Jueshan ult. They didn't like the idea of Tarka frying their monk, but their Jueshan ult didn't do much and Monk and Kurumi had to ult anyway. I think opening Monk ult is the better play, even when there is a Temuk and a Tarka. Analyzing just the fights from three games revealed a lot of stuff to work on. Much of it is tied to awareness and solved by habit building. I will try to fix one thing at a time, starting with focus attacking our Monk slams. Did you notice any other patterns? Does this video encourage you to record your games and analyze the replays? Let me know in the comments.